Bruce Springsteen has spent much of 2018 performing an acclaimed autobiographical show on a New York City stage. And tomorrow, a filmed version of that show, Springsteen on Broadway, will make its streaming debut. But 2018 has been a signal year for one of Springsteen's band members as well, Nils Lofgren. He also has a noteworthy biography of his own and is celebrating his golden anniversary in the music business. NewsHour Weekend's Tom Cachado has the story. Even if you've never heard of Nils Lofgren, chances are you've heard Nils Lofgren. He's best known as a member of Bruce Springsteen's famed E Street Band and for periodically backing Neil Young. But what about Ringo Starr in the spotlight? There's Nils Lofgren. Jerry Lee Lewis at the mic, Nils Lofgren. Chuck Berry out front, Nils Lofgren. Willie Nelson and Friends. If you blink, you'll miss him, but there's Nils Lofgren. Performing before tens of thousands, he doesn't mind playing sideman to the household names. Even though I'm grateful for a reputation as a guitar player, I don't need to solo. I enjoy giving it up and being a guy in the band and contributing as best I can. But had things broken a bit differently, he might have been one of those household names himself. Though that's kind of a long story. By the way, I just want you to know this month I'm celebrating 50 years on the road. Nils Lofgren fell in love with music early, but he didn't begin with guitar lessons. You started out on the accordion. Yes. My mom's Sicilian, my dad's Swedish, and it, it's a big part of their heritage, the accordion. So I asked for lessons. I still love the accordion, uh, but you know, the written note in classical music, which I studied classical accordion after the waltzes and polkas, uh, you know, all the emotion has to come inside the notes written. You cannot deviate. So I fell in love with the idea of blues guitar where you improvise what you hear. That love turned to pure passion the first time he went to hear Jimi Hendrix. And Jimi blew us all away and that night I was, it was almost an uncomfortable possession. I left with that I had to try to be a professional rock musician, which never entered my mind until that night. How old were you? Uh, 17. Within weeks, I dropped out of school. I was very harmless looking. I looked like a waif. You know, I was like five foot two, and you know, I had a handful of songs. And um, not knowing anything about music industry or the business, I'd sneak backstage at every show, try to meet the performers, and ask for advice. One night, the teenage Lofgren went to a show at the legendary Cellar Door in Washington, D.C., and approached the headliner, Neil Young. I walked in on him in the band, and, uh, you know, I cried the blues about, you know, my lot as a new young musician, didn't know what I was doing, and Neil had a Martin in his hand and said, would you have any songs for your band? I said, yeah, I've written a handful of songs. And He handed me his guitar and said, sing me one, sing me another, and after four or five songs, says, I really like those songs. Slow down a second. All right. You're 17 years old. You invite yourself unannounced backstage to a Neil Young show. Well, I walked in on them. If I'd asked management, can I meet Neil, the answer would have been no, he's busy. Before he knew it, Lofgren was invited to Los Angeles to play guitar and piano on an album that would become a classic. Uh, when I was 18 years old, uh, David Briggs and Neil Young asked me to play on the After the Gold Rush album. and. And I just practiced and practiced. And this particular day, uh, Ralphie, the great drummer, Ralphie Molina, stayed behind. And we were working on Southern Man. It was like, bum, bum, wah, bum, bum, bah. Uh, that's where the scenario is. And after about a half an hour, I wanted to break it up. And you know, I come from the, the polka, accordion school, you know. Roll out that whole oompa thing. And so I started double timing, you know, doing octaves and yeah. You know. So when uh, Neil and David came back from lunch, they said, What the heck is that? And I said, That's um, Southern Man with a polka beat. And they said, that feels great, but don't ever say that again. Rock and roll ruled the airwaves back then, and Nils Lofgren was an up-and-comer. Still not even 20, he made his first national television appearance in 1971, 
on a PBS special alongside one of his idols, virtuoso Roy Buchanan. Roy was a master, and I fell in love with that sound. The master helped the kid develop a signature style. This is the first time I heard a harmonic sound like bells, and he showed me how to do it. Lofgren was on the rise, and it appeared the sky was the limit. In his 20s, he performed live with his own bands and recorded a series of solo records, getting some great reviews along the way. In the 70s, did you think that stardom was on the way? Well, you know, the whole stardom uh, rock star thing, sex, drugs, rock and roll, and death, that never had a big appeal to me. I really didn't want to be famous. I always saw it as like a very serious venture of making a living playing music as a musician. A gymnast as well as a musician, Lofgren incorporated acrobatics into videos and concerts. But no matter what he tried, by the early 80s, his music just wasn't selling. The record deals dried up, and to my horror, I went to all the companies, and they're like, no, uh, you, you've been at it now for quite a while, no hit records, you don't make us money, you're kind of like a dinosaur. I hit a, a really low point, I got down in the dumps, I started drinking a little too much, and uh, feeling sorry for myself. And it was during that time period, um, I stayed in touch with Bruce. We first cr crossed paths in 1970. And so uh, I called him and he said, what's going on? And he could tell I was kind of down in the dumps. I said, why don't you come up, hang out with me for a weekend in Jersey, which I did. It wasn't just a weekend with Springsteen. It was the start of Lofgren's second act, among rock's most acclaimed backing musicians. A chance to just be a guy in the band, even if it was one of the world's most famous bands. That was really life-changing. Totally. One last time from Freddie's joint. A lot has changed in Nils Lofgren's half century as a performer. As he's continued to record, rock and roll has given way to hip hop as America's most popular music. The club where he first met Neil Young is a Starbucks now. And with two artificial hips and a pair of torn shoulders, the gymnastics are a thing of the past, too. I used to worry between songs where my quadruple gin and tonic was. Now at 67, I'm worried about hydration. But at the final show of his 50th year, playing not for tens of thousands, but for a few hundred at New York City Winery, Nils Lofgren seems perfectly satisfied. If you could give some advice now to that 17-year-old Nils Lofgren who used to sneak backstage to meet rock stars, what would you say? Oh boy, I'd just say, uh, you know, keep following your dreams, don't sign anything, drink less. <laughs> Honestly, I was just a scared young musician in love with rock and roll and just music, period. And, you know, I look back and realize, you know, I was given a gift that I didn't ask for just trying to caretake it in my wildest dreams. I would have never been greedy enough to think 50 years later, hundreds of people would come from <laughs> all over to hear me sing my songs for them. After 50 years, I've got a crowd to walk out and sing for. And I almost feel like all I have to do is get out of the way and, and let the music come through me. 